Yorana, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Muay Thai Brotherson. I'm the current president of French Polynesia, Maui Nui. And uh, I'm very happy and honored uh, to be speaking to you uh, during this uh, State of the Pacific 2024 conference. I will be uh, addressing you about our specific uh, journey to self-determination from the ancient times where we were a free country and then uh, the arrival of the Europeans, first the Brits uh, with uh, Captain Samuel Wallis in uh, 1767 and followed closely by the French, Mr. Bougainville and uh, then Captain Cook. So at the time, all the, I would say, the big countries from Europe uh, were basically discovering uh, the world, the unknown world and, and bringing, I would say, the light uh, to the savages. It was a time where uh, these nations uh, were at the same time uh, doing some military colonization but also uh, bringing with them Christianity so it was both a religious and a military colonization. Uh, the Brits came with the London Missionary Society so which, which is now the Protestant Church, the dominant church here in uh, French Polynesia and uh, the French came with the Catholic Church, which is the second church here <laughs> in Polynesia. Um, during this time, I would say um, there was a competition, a fierce competition between the Brits and the French about who was going to take control of uh, our country. And the usual, I would say, blend of uh, diplomacy, military control, military pressure, uh, religious uh, lobbying was used by both sides. Um, this, I would say, and I'm, I'm gonna, you know, uh, tell this story short. This bringing us to uh, 1880, uh, where the French uh, annexated our uh, country by, I would say, forcing King Pomare V, the fifth, and all the, the chiefs that were. Uh, still ruling, uh, so to speak, the country at the time to give up uh, its uh, Tahiti and its dependencies to, to France. So the first true episode of the loss of our independence is really the signing of this treaty of annexation uh, between uh, by King Pomare V and all the chiefs that were there. Um, this was the beginning of the era of co real colonization to us. The second episode on our journey uh, should have been a happy one. It was uh, the creation of the, uh, the United Nations on October 24th, uh, 1945. The basic idea between, behind sorry, uh, the creation of the United Nations was for all these uh, big uh, nations to do an analysis of which were the causes that led to World War II and how to avoid in the future uh, World War III. One of uh, these uh, causes that were identified was the existence of those uh, colonial empires uh, that uh, were held by those, some of the, the countries that were belligerent. And so those colonial empires, th their existence was enticing those, those colonial powers to expand uh, those empires. Hence, uh, the creation of the UN list of non-self-governing territories to be decolonized, and that was the start of the decolonization process. The first list of those uh, non-self-governing territories to be decolonized by the UN was established in uh, December 4th, 14th, uh, 1946 and the French establishments in Oceania which were mainly uh, what's called now New Caledonia, Wallis and Futuna and uh, now French Polynesia were on that initial list of non-self-governing territories to be decolonized. <clears throat> the next episode in our journey is uh, the referendum uh, that was held uh, in all the French Republic and its dependencies in September uh, 1958 for the adoption of uh, the new constitution that would uh, be leading to the Fifth uh, Republic in France. That uh, referendum 
that uh, was a clear win for France uh, in Tahiti, with uh, almost 80% of the vote being a yes, is the very often used by the French uh, Republic to say that even at that time, uh, and that was, they consider it as a, as a self-determination act, uh, the people of French Polynesia uh, decided to, to remain French. But we have to remind ourselves that at the time, in 1958, uh, the majority of the Tahitian people uh, were not very fluent in, in the French language. And the question that was asked, first of all, was written only in French, and the only political parties that had access to uh, the media and to propaganda were the pro-French political parties. The only uh, opposing party to uh, that referendum was a guy named Powana Opa, and he's now considered as the father figure of uh, Tahitian uh, nationalism. Uh, Powana Opa, at the time, he, he, he went to war uh, during World War II, uh, and uh, he was somehow uh, admiring this, you know, a very, um, I would say, uh, imposing figure of uh, Charles de Gaulle, General de Gaulle. So even during the, his campaign, while he was campaigning uh, for a no to the referendum, he was at the same time uh, proclaiming vive de Gaulle. But, uh, so he was the only one at the time to oppose the French referendum. But keep in mind that he didn't, act, he didn't have access to any media, to any, uh, I would say, propaganda. He had very limited resources, uh, whereas the pro-French party was, were helped by the French state, by the French governor at the time. And uh, of course, uh, the question was not really, do you want to remain French or to become independent at the time? The question that was asked is, was, do you uh, agree with the new constitution uh, for the French Republic? The next episode on our journey takes place totally out of French Polynesia, a little before uh, the referendum, the 1958 referendum, and after that referendum. Uh, it takes place in Algeria. Algeria is then also a French colony, and in 1954, uh, their fight for independence and the war uh, for the, f the freedom of Algeria begins. At the same time, and after World War II, uh, there was this quest by the superpowers, started by the United States, then Russia, and all the others, to um, obtain the nuclear power. And at the time, France and General de Gaulle had established that they needed absolutely to become a nuclear power, and hence they needed to do testing somewhere. And they decided to uh, start their start the, the testing in the Sahara des Desert of Algeria, and those start those tests started in Algeria in 1960. But at the time they begin testing in Algeria, they also get a sense in the 1955, 1956, that they might not be able to uh, continue the testings if Algeria gains independence. The link between what's happening at the time in Algeria from 1954 to uh, 1960, where the French nuclear tests start in the Sahara Desert, and our journey might not be obvious. But it is now established that somewhere in 1956, the French already start to search for a plan B in case Algeria gains uh, its independence. They sent scouts all over France, uh, in Corsica, in, in Bretagne, in other parts of main, mainland France. Uh, they also sent those military scouts overseas, and some of them end up here in uh, French Polynesia. And we kind of tick all the boxes. We are far from everything, uh, not very uh, populated, not uh, informed of what goes around with uh, nuclear tests and very uh, not very accessible to the international press. 
So it is now established by historians that in 1957, one year before the 1958 referendum, the French had already decided that the plan B for the nuclear test in case Algeria uh, gains independence was going to be Tahiti in that context. When the referendum, the 1958 referendum, occurs and Povana, who was at the time a member of the French parliament, what we call a député, uh, opposes the referendum, he's perceived, and also because of what the messages he's uh, sending to the population, he's perceived as a threat to the nuclear tests. The link is not uh, very well established, but, you know, it's not very easy to uh, link the dots. A little bit after the referendum, um, there is a, some kind of turmoil that happens in the city of Papeete, and uh, Povana Opa is accused of uh, being a terrorist that wanted to burn the city. It was, of course, a farce of uh, a, 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 tr a trial, and he was sent to exile. That was, I would say, the grand opening for the nuclear test to happen without any disturbance. So it was very important for the French people and uh, General de Gaulle made it clear in some messages while Povana was exiled to France that it was important that he could not return to French Polynesia because they needed the French nuclear test to start in French Polynesia right away. With uh, Povana Opa exiled and far away from Tahiti, the path is now clear for the French nuclear test. The installation of the French Center of Experimentation here, the CEP, uh, starts in 1963. Just before that, the French decide to build the port, the international port and the international airport, because it was a much needed logistics uh, elements for uh, the, the, the for the French nuclear tests. So in 1966, on the on July 2nd, the first nuclear test called Aldebaran, a 28 uh, kilotons uh, bomb, is uh, is held uh, over Morro. So from uh, 1966 to 1996, it's a total of uh, 100 and. 93 uh, nuclear tests that were performed by France in uh, French Polynesia. Uh, 46 of them uh, being aerial tests that was in the first phase up to 1974 and the rest because of all the outrage that was taking place in the Pacific and in the world uh, was done underground. This brings us to uh, the next episode in our journey. And this is the creation in 1977 of the Tavenihuit Atirao Teo Maori that was uh, created, founded by Oscar Manutahi Temaru. Oscar Temaru at the time was a French civil servant. He was uh, working for customs and had the opportunity a few times to go to Moruroa. And it was there that uh, his first, he saw for, uh, firsthand what was happening there and that he started, you know, uh, having questions, having doubts about the official thesis of those clean testing. Uh, very rapidly, he made contact with uh, some scientists from all over the world and got the determination that those nuclear tests were a bad thing and that they were not clean. So he st started the, the Tavini Huid Atira both as a pro-independence party and an anti-nuclear party. Because at the time there was a very much a superimposition of the anti-nuclear um, fight and the pro-independence fight. Very quickly, Oscar Temaru was convinced that uh, if he wanted to succeed both in the anti-nuclear uh, quest and for, in his quest for independence, he couldn't stay on a local or a bilateral level with France. He had to go international and to convince the international community to help us both against the, the French nuclear tests and for our independence. 
In 1978, so just one year after the creation of the Taiwanese Hul Attila, you have to remember that at the time he's still a French civil servant, he's still working in, in the French customs. Uh, he has no political mandate, he has no electoral mandate. He decides to go to New York, to the United Nations, and he goes along with uh, our friends from uh, New Caledonia, Kanaki, from the FLNKS, with uh, the first uh, member of the parliament from the Kanak people, uh, Charles Pigeot, and uh, some other friends from uh, Kanaki. So they all go to, to New York uh, to go and convince uh, the UN to help them out, uh, both uh, Kanaki and uh, French Polynesia on their quest to uh, self-determination and independence, and in our case also for uh, the ending of the nuclear tests. This travel to the United Nations and to the UN must have been such an adventure at the time because we don't realize now we have, I wouldn't say direct flights, but it's very easy to go from Tahiti to New York, but at the time the, travel, the traveling was not as, as easy as it is now. And also, uh, the Kanak people, the, the FLNKS, they didn't speak any English. And Oscar, at the time, wasn't uh, as fluent in English as he is now. So they end up in New York, they don't know anyone, they don't have a hotel. They end up in some Baptist church in Harlem because they had a letter of recommendation from the pro Protestant church here. And that's how they, 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 they find uh, somewhere to, <laughs> to sleep. And, uh, but somehow they managed to get through the UN and to meet with uh, uh, the authorities at the UN. For Oscar, this meeting at the UN, I think at the time the Secretary General was uh, Kurt Weildheim from uh, Austria. And uh, so first the Kanak people uh, talk and explain their quest, and then Oscar comes and explain also his quest for independence, for self-determination, and to end up the nuclear tests. And on that very day, that's when, because if we f do a flashback to, you know, creation of the UN, uh, the establishing of the first uh, UN list of non-self-governing territories, the fact that both New Caledonia and uh, French Polynesia were on that list, of course, but no one uh, in our countries knew about that list. Ne no one knew it even exist existed and that we were on that list. So on that very same day in 1978, both Oscar and the Kanak people learned that first there existed a list of non-self-governing territories that were to be decolonized by the UN. Second, that uh, both New Caledonia and French Polynesia were on that list. And third, we are in 78, that we were delisted uh, upon request, unilateral request from France to re-edit uh, the, the list, to republish the list in 1963. 1963, the very year, the uh, French uh, Nuclear Experiment Center is established in our country. So when Oscar Temaru comes back to Tahiti after that 1978 meeting at the UN where he realizes that the UN couldn't do anything about uh, the UN, the, the French nuclear tests in our country because we were delisted from the UN list of non-self-governing territories, he's a little bit angry. And he's now thinking that he will dedicate a lot of his energy to have us back on that list. Flash forward 35 years later, that's how long it took Oscar Temaru, and it shows you the determination, the determination of uh, our leader. Uh, 35 years later, in uh, May uh, 17, 2013, at last, we succeeded after three years of lobbying, after three years of visiting and you know explaining our situation to uh, ambassadors to permanent representatives at the UN, to writing hundreds and hundreds of uh, letters, uh, going to conferences, touring the Pacific. Uh, 
gathering support from the region, uh, first from the PCC, the Pacific Council of Churches, and the World Council of Churches in Pula, Samoa, then uh, convincing the Pacific, uh, the Polynesian Leaders Group in Rarotonga also to support our quest, and then having the forum, the Pacific Forum support. That's how basically we gain momentum, and at some point we achieved, Oscar achieved to convince uh, the you know the NAM movement, which is one of the most prominent groups uh, in in the UN, to support also our resolution for being uh, back on the list, and that happened on that I would say blessed day of uh, May 17, 2013. So where do all these episodes uh, in our journey uh, put us now nowadays? Since uh, May. Uh, 17, 2013, we are back on the UN list of uh, non-self-governing territories to be decolonized. It was, um, I would say, uh, not well uh, accepted, <laughs> so to speak, by the, the French. At the time, they considered it um, a blatant interference of the UN in internal uh, affairs. And following that, for 10 years, there was this, uh, I would say, schizophrenic denial from France of our uh, reinscription at the UN. Let me explain. The French have, since uh, 19, uh, uh, the 1980s, already have, already had <coughs> uh, one of, of its former colonies uh, back on that list, and it, it was New Caledonia. And so, some years after, in 2013, within the same political framework, using only democratic uh, and legal uh, means, we achieved, Oscar Temaru achieved, to have, us, to have us back on that list also. From the day we were back on the list, uh, and then for, for 10 years, whenever the question, the item of uh, French Polynesia was tabled at the UN, the French permanent representative would leave the room and he would only come back after. So you had a very paradoxical uh, position from France where they would stay uh, to listen and to respond uh, to the statements made by uh, the representatives from New Caledonia, Kanaki, but not for us. They were still uh, I would say, stuck in their denial stance towards our inscription. But to us, it was very important to play by the rules of international law. Since uh, the creation of uh, the Taveni Guidatira uh, or Teo Maori um, political party by Oscar Temaru, our statute very specifically uh, stipulates that we don't want to attain independence uh, through violence. We want to achieve it through democratic and legal ways. So we put ourselves under the, I would say, within the framework of international law at the UN because we consider that the bilateral discussion uh, between France and us is by nature totally asymmetrical in terms of the balance of power. So discussing you know, only in a bilateral way uh, between France and us uh, would be a totally biased process. So that's, that's why uh, Oscar Temaru was so persistent in wanting us back on that UN list. But we have to, to realize that 10 years of being ignored by the French is a long time. So in the recent years, I would say in the recent two or three years, there is this idea that somehow um, emerged uh, in some, some parts of our political party that maybe France will never uh, want to play by international law and we have to somehow uh, get out of uh, the framework of the UN and maybe as some countries like Kosovo or others uh, did at the time, uh, go the way of self-proclamation. The main line of the political party Taveni Huiratira still 
believes that we have to stick by the rules and play by the book. And it has to be noted that uh, last year there was some, some progress at the UN. For the first time uh, since our reinscription, the permanent representative of France at, at the UN stayed uh, during at least my speech as president of uh, French Polynesia and made an answer to it uh, when the item of French Polynesia was tabled. So that, I think, I consider it, that was the first step uh, towards uh, the dialogue that uh, we, we are expecting and that, that was put in our reinscription resolution. So what's, what's left for us on our journey to self-determination? First of all, let's reiterate that we didn't go to the UN uh, on, and we didn't you know, lobby from 2011 to 2013 to ask the UN to declare our independence. No, we wanted the UN to put us back on the UN list of non-self-governing territories to be able to engage in a self-determination process. And that's, that implies that we establish a dialogue under, uh, I would say, uh, the scrutiny of the UN uh, in a non-bilateral but in a multilateral uh, fashion uh, to engage the dialogue with our administering power, with France, to establish the self-determination process that we want to establish. There has been one put into place in New Caledonia. Um, it uh, was the result of uh, some violence that took place in the 80s. It was also, um, I would say, um, monitored by the UN. So that, that was the process that they choose with those three referendum, even though we don't consider and the, the Kanak people don't consider the third referendum that took place in New Caledonia as a valid one, and because the, the Kanak people didn't participate in that, uh, in that referendum. But that does not mean that we necessarily want to have exactly the same process as New Caledonia. The second point uh, that we have to make very clear here is that, you know, when you talk about uh, self-determination, you have several options. You can choose to remain in the same uh, statute that uh, you are now. You can choose to uh, be fully integrated uh, to the administering power. To us, that would mean becoming no longer a French collectivity, but to become a French département, uh, département d'outre-mer. Uh, then, um, I would say, suppressing our local institutions, because we currently have uh, a, a local assembly that doesn't vote laws, but votes regulation, reglementations, and also that would basically suppress uh, my job as a president because it would suppress the, the local government. So that would be the sec second option, the full integration to uh, the administering power. Third option would be becoming independent. Um, and there is this, this fourth option that is called sui generis, uh, that would basically mean to establish a new statute of cooperation uh, between us and, fr and France. If we look at some other countries, and we, are, we have been closely looking at them for many years, for example, the Cook Islands, uh, Rarotonga, you can see that uh, independence nowadays is not necessarily what independence was in the 60s. We are now, I would say, exercising a, a statute of so-called autonomy uh, with a local uh, assembly, with a local government, I'm the president of the government, I have ministers, I have a government, we have a, a, a set number of competencies that uh, we manage, and uh, the French state uh, still retains uh, some of the major competencies, like foreign affairs, like the uh, currency, the uh, justice, police, army. Uh, but if you look at Rarotonga, they have this uh, statute of uh, associated uh, state uh, with uh, New Zealand. So our way, uh, our, the end of the journey to self-determination, of course, depends 
on the will of the Polynesian people. That's the, the very basis. It has to remain a democratic process. So we have to set up the path. For that, we have to establish the dialogue with uh, the French uh, state, with our administering power, under the auspices of uh, the UN. And when the self-determination act will happen, then the people of uh, now French Polynesia, hopefully someday Maori Nui, uh, will decide which way they want to go. So hopefully, this year in October, when we will go to the fourth commission, we'll see again some progress. And I, that's a request that I'm, I'm making to uh, President Macron and to uh, his uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. We still don't have a, a set government as we speak in France. But as soon as the new government in France will, will be uh, announced, I will send a request uh, to President Macron the Prime Minister and to the new Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, to enable us at the next uh, fourth commission where we'll, uh, we will travel from October 17th, uh, 7th to uh, 11th um, to start to take that second step towards the dialogue that needs to be set uh, for us to go forward on our path to self-determination. Thank you for listening. Yeah, for your head.